43, but who's counting? <laughs> and that's that's amazing. Tell me when we're all good. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is Roberto Dutesco. <laughs> to say his name would be to think that he came from some quaint little town in Italy. That's but right. As I just found out, tu viens du Canada. Oui, oui, exactement. He's and Canadian. I was born in Bucharest. Sure. Uh, Via Bucharest. In uh, Romania. Romania, moving to Canada when I was 17, just before going to army. You know, your typical, <laughs> your typical Bucharest, Romania. Exactly. Montreal. How did you come to Montreal? Well, um, we had to make a decision before going to, uh, before me uh, going to the army, whether the whole family was going to leave uh, Romania or not. I had an amazing life there. None of this uh, media type of uh, uh, announcements, which have been yeah. very foreign from my life that I right. that I had in Romania. We just did, uh, decided that we should leave uh, because for us uh, to create a better life and to to try something new so was Ceausescu still in Canada yeah Ceausescu was very much in power and the the way to leave at that time we had a beautiful house and we had to just exchange a house for five plane tickets and five uh, passports but that's such a long time ago let's talk about something more <laughs> interesting anyway Roberto <laughs> is a is a, was a, is a wonderful <laughs> photographer who have you always been? He, I mean, not just a photographer. You started in fashion, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, I started way before fashion. I mean, what I did really, I've been taking photographs since I was six or seven years old. My uncle was an amazing person. He inspired me to take pictures from the very beginning. My dad also, he had a small Leica. So having a Leica in Romania, it wow. gives you an idea that I had a different life than perhaps many other people. And with that life, I was always very much interested in, in recording things. And uh, us as a family, we had like a, like a big box filled with photographs. Right. And one of my favorite things was to go through those photographs. The, the whole family was traveling extensively through, through Europe and to look at pictures of my dad and Mona Lisa or yeah. him and the, the Tour Eiffel or, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, just in different parts of the world. So I imagine that the world is available to me even at a very early young age. And I started taking pictures, and uh, those photographs from the very beginning. I mean, I I still uh, have very much love. They've inspired me to to kind of go on and study photography back in Montreal in at the Dawson Institute of Photography. So I mean, I studied three years, twenty four seven photography. photography. That's it. Life through nothing lives. else. Like three years, twenty four seven, and. You know, once you know technique, I think that everything else becomes kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really matter what you photograph. Right, but you still have I can take yes. I can take a, a cup picture of that. And I can make it very interesting and I can even create a show about it. Because it's all about light, it's about emotion, it's about in intention. Intention is very important. But what do you love? Like did you have a passion when you were younger before you got into fashion? Well, you, what do you love seeing through the lens the most? Well, I mean I started painting and drawing and uh, uh, I like the idea that we encounter so many moments in our lives and those moments kind of come and go and with a camera you are able to, to capture their, that uh, decisive moment right. and have a chance to actually look at it a bit later on. Yeah. Last night I was on, the, on my rooftop and I have taken a fantastic, wait, wait, wait. fantastic you photograph. You take pictures with your phone absolutely, also? Absolutely, absolutely. I have 20, like 25,000 right. photographs on my iPhone. And I'm going to show you the last photograph. You see, I walk into the room and I've already taken three photographs. Yeah, I see that. However, last night... None of them night, were of me. None of them were of me. However, yeah, hopefully he has a last night, I have to... I mean, I'm just going to show you guys, which is kind of very, very interesting. I'm on the, on the, on the rooftop. And I'm taking a beautiful photograph. Can you see what it is? The pressure's on me to make sure I see what it is. Are those eyes? That's right, you see? So there are many rooftops with some eyes on the top. Which camera should I actually show it? Sure. This yeah, one? Yeah, but I think it'll be hard to see. What is, is that? Possible? Where is that? Oh, wow, I see it. Okay. <laughs> Um, Difficult to see, but you know what? what I'm going to create gonna a actually, show. You're going to send me a text to I'm going to gonna text you this and then you yeah. can put it up. Because what I'm doing, 25,000 photographs later, uh, 
Give I, I have decided to actually uh, do a small book, a five by seven book, with my 500 poems and about 500 photographs. Uh, 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 and about, yeah. So 500 poems and about 500 photographs and just distribute it. So. Do you consider, so a picture is a picture, whether you use this Correct. or Correct, yes, a because it records dollar. something that, that nobody else can through my eyes. <laughs> but do you think that this is ruining photography? Um, we photograph everything, anything. Oh, you smile, let me take well, a picture. There's well, my kid, there's my this. Oh, he sneezed, let me take a picture well, of Well, intention is very important. You know, it's one thing to take a photograph and something else to actually create a photograph. Tell me the difference. And there's a distinction there. Uh, taking a picture, sometimes I take a picture just because I want to remember something. So in this room, there's a beautiful painting on the wall and I'm thinking, I just finished alphabetical mayhem. So I'm going to create 26 canvases in that size. And I'm looking at it like, it feels good. It's a, it's a beautiful size canvas. I like the way it's presented on the wall. Right. So in that regard, I've taken three photographs just as a recording device okay. without really composing it. When I really want to take a photograph like the one that I have just shown you, right. that's a very different mindset. There I go into it as a photographer making decisions on composition, on lighting, on everything else. And you can do all that stuff with my old iPhone, hopefully with the new one too. Yeah, so. hopefully. We all. Yes, yes. Two weeks to come in. That's right. I have to upgrade my old one. Yeah. So, that's, so that's the main difference. The creating, yeah. composing. Versus just taking. Versus just click, 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 click. I mean, those are recording devices. Right. And they serve a different purpose than actually than actually creating an image, which you, 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 you're going to eventually um, print or put up on the wall and sell for a hundred thousand dollars yeah okay that's gonna happen <laughs> let me show you some of my kids so here's what I, so here's what you're doing now so you you went through the gamut you went to photography school you studied you know photography 24 right. 7 and then yes. somehow that dissolved into fashion and correct. you became this like world-renowned fashion photographer right. yes and correct. then all of a sudden you woke up one day and you said you know what i haven't done I haven't gotten lost on a deserted island somewhere with very few humans, but many, many horses. That's what you probably said to yourself. Well, I mean, it's kind of interesting the way it turned out. I mean, partly <laughs> yes, partly yes. Wait, most because... what music did you bring with you? Well, the only music that I, the only music that I've been listening through for the past twenty-five years, whenever I travel, wherever I travel. It's Peter, is. It's, it's Peter Gabriel's music, the, the, tree. the Last Temptation of Christ, is the actual uh, soundtrack, and I must have listened to it on repeat uh, thousands and thousands of, of times. Yeah. It's something that inspires me a lot, it brings me into a specific uh, a space, which is very much uh, outside the uh, Is it all blocks. instrumental, or is there... Are there uh, artists? Well, uh, well, it's just Peter Gabriel, it's voice, uh, oh, he uh, is singing chorus, songs, okay. uh, no, he does not sing, it's just mostly instrumental, oh. but it's instrumental beyond because it, it, it brings you at different levels of, emo uh, of uh, emotion and, uh, and there's, right. a, there's a longing in that, in that spectacular uh, album, which from beginning to 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 to, to, to the end right. inspires me in in many different ways. So yes, when I went to Sable Island, that's the music that I brought with me. Unlike Kesha, let's just say. <laughs> but let's let's get into it because the music is interesting. But Lance threw us for a curveball there. But you went to this Sable Island. Where is Sable Island? Tell yeah, me. and so how, how 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 I mean everything started some twenty five years ago. Uh, in the early 90s, I mean, I was shooting fashion, I was uh, doing some campaigns Hobnobby for... Hobnobbing with uh, the models, yeah, I mean, money was just pouring in, that's like in a right. montage, that's there exactly was like sprinkling the, down, the right. bling, right, you had bling. Yeah, however, what, because as you, you, I mean, you all know, fashion years or fashion seasons, they go up and down, so... I know. Uh, very much, uh, you, you, <laughs> you would be... I mean, I would be intensely involved with the fashion season and then I would be having some time off. Right. And in those time off, I would travel to different parts of the world. And when I discovered uh, Sable Island just by chance, the very short black and white film, which was done in the early 60s, I thought, wow, I mean, maybe I should just do something about it or at least find some information. You have to remember that there were no phones. There was no... Uh, this is the early 90s. The early 90s. I mean, there, were, there, there was nothing. You had to go to the library to actually find something. Okay, about so I don't know what that else. thing is that you just said, but... So, uh, 
I could not find anything about it. But first of all, tell so people I was where Sable much, Island is. I was very much intrigued by Sable Island, which is up the coast of Nova Scotia. Beautiful, up in So up the, up the coast of no, uh, Nova Scotia, about uh, an hour and a half by a small plane from Halifax. So how do you know where Halifax is when you're traveling from Europe? into New York City or any other East Coast city, you more likely will cross over Sable Island, Halifax, Boston, down to, to New York. Oh, nice. So, uh, Sable Island is about 400 nautical miles from where the Titanic went down. Oh, wow. And Suddenly Sable Island. Suddenly it all Island, has meaning to me. I'm like, I must Sable go to the Sable Island, Island, Island the Titanic went except there. Except it's off limits and nobody can go there. And Sable well, Island an, uh... has all the shipwrecks. So, the way that I describe it, Sable Island is a place of some 500 horses, 500 shipwrecks, and about 500 years of known history, because we very much know by now, I hope, that America was not discovered by Christopher Columbus. For a matter of fact, he discovered Dominican Republic, and it was Amerigo Vespucci who discovered America. That's why it's called America and not Dominica or something else. Right. But those are the early explorers of the last 500 years okay, or so. so many questions so first of all why were all these ships getting wrecked there was no way of communicating hey don't come through here 488 ships before you have all crashed this is right. not the place to be interesting enough the the last shipwreck was in 2004 it was a sail uh a boat like a 46 footer that uh, left the new york harbor and it was going to to, to travel around the world uh, uh, it set uh, due course north and east, and at night they forgot about Sable Island, oh, no and lights. they kind of set it up like about five to ten miles out. However, Sable Island is a very narrow sandbar in the middle of the ocean. It's the length of Central Park in width, and the sorry, it's the width of Central Park, and the length of perhaps twice Manhattan. So it's about 30 miles, 44 kilometers. So what happens? these sandbars are extending themselves out to about five to six miles out. Right. So five to six miles if you're sailing, I don't know if you're a sailor or not, you know that the, the horizon line, depending on how high you are, sits around five kilometers. So you actually will not see Sable Island, and chances are you're gonna break your rudder or your keel, and that's basically how you're gonna end up shipwrecked on Sable Island. But how do they not, I don't know. I'm getting too far off course. I'm, I'm fascinated by How? the fact that they had 500 well, it, shipwrecks here and there's no one that could put up like a lampost or something they on Sable Island and be but, like, but you'll never see it. Go around. Go around. But, go you'll, around. but you'll never <laughs> actually <laughs> see it just because five mile out, five miles out, you're not going to see right. a lamppost. Well, what or, can they do? Well, they have done many things. They have had many lighthouses. They've all been destroyed because of because gigantic of storms. So if you remember uh, the uh, perfect storm, do I remember, remember the perfect it? storm? I have perfectly good nightmares about there it. There we go. So the perfect storm, the reason I know that that particular wave was like 10 story high, because the debris on Sable Island went to that height. <gasps> wow. See? I bet you did not know that, right? Well, here's the coolest <laughs> thing is this has nothing to do with what you even, I mean, I would say if you went to Sable Island to photograph these shipwrecks, you could make a book this thick just on that and it would be fascinating. Absolutely. But you've chosen to not celebrate death on that island or destruction, but instead life. And here is an island uninhabited, correct? There's like two or three people that live on the whole island. Two people that have been there for about 40 years or wow. so. Okay. They got along. Man and woman? They do, yes. Fantastic individuals. Uh, Jerry Forbes and Zoe Lucas, I mean, their uh, Jerry Forbes has been uh, uh, called back onto the mainland. Not and, to be uh, confused with Gerald Ford. That's Which right. So funny. Jerry Forbes, Jerry Forbes. And? An incredible individual who's been the superintendent on, on say, just, just like a sheriff. Does he live there? Yeah, he's been there for 40 years. And Zoe Lucas, She's been there for about 40 uh, plus years. Yeah. So Zoe Lucas, I mean, basically she devoted her time and her life to protection of Sable Island and to the and exploration. And they come back to the mainland to get... Once a year. Okay, let me, there's not a human on earth that I could spend 40 <laughs> years with, which is one person, <laughs> least of which Lance. But let me just tell you, unless, unless this show becomes wildly successful within the next six months... It better be. Yes, it better be. Um, 
So finally, all our history and all our past has gotten up to now. So you, you land on this island and, and you are awestruck by the most beautiful wild animals you've ever seen, these horses. Right. Well, why, why horses on why? this island? Why? Well, you see, there? I came from, from, the, from the fashion world. And in that fashion world, you have a certain intensity. Uh, and we know very much about the fashion world, what it is and what it, what it uh, represents to actually many people. So Diet in, my, in, in my many travels, I've always taken the time to document other places and other things. And when I discovered Sable Island, I thought it was very important for it to be recorded in the proper way, whatever that means, by a professional photographer. Because I thought if a gigantic wave is going to wash over Sable Island, I mean, there's nothing left of it. I mean, nobody will ever know about it. So as a photographer, I became more of a documentarian of Sable Island and its band of wild horses. And so 20-some uh, years later, we opened up the gallery in New York City. Some uh, 10 years ago, we're going to celebrate it uh, in about uh, three, four weeks, uh, 10 years anniversary. We published two books. Uh, we did a film, uh, Chasing Wild Horses, playing in some 30 countries Love and it. seen by, I don't know, 30, 40 million people around the world. And all this, it's about beauty, not about destruction, not about ugliness, not about anything else. It's about beauty being left uh, untouched by, by any sort of uh, human decision making, other than it should just be alone, should be free should be unaware and unattached to men. Right. So when I'm on Sable Island, I'm very much conscious and aware of those ideas. And I try to make myself as small as possible, as little as possible, and allow them to do whatever they want. Right. And uh, with total respect and to total uh, love for them. And that's why this, this image bus, here, Look at that. it's called Love. So Love, Sable Island, 1994. So, that's an amazing book. We published it with the noise. Show uh, me your favorite picture in here. A couple of years you know ago. Show me your favorite uh, picture. Two years ago. It got sold out. It did. Yeah. Look and now the second printing. And uh, by the end of this year, I'm just going to open summer. You see, I just opened one image here. Okay. I don't know if you guys see it. And inside, oh. it opens like that. So there we go. <laughs> that's Love Bite and that's Love. And I hope that all of you will have some of it in your lives, you know, to know exactly no, I, it's what true love and true, not a complete uh, real love bite is about, you know. So face. I just open it by chance at some page. And if I'm going to open it somewhere else, it's another horse which is kind of cozily standing, love it. sitting, lying. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it's kind of extraordinary to be amongst the wilderness which is not aware of you. And they come very close to you and they kind of snuggle and some of them they kind of bump heads with me and they... Do they understand? They don't want to hurt you in any way. Well, look at my face. Why Who would they? want to hurt you? If I was a horse, you'd be the last thing I'd <laughs> exactly. want to Exactly. There we go. You see? It's a sentence I never thought I'd <laughs> ever say. But... So, uh, what I, I mean, what I've envisioned that, uh, and what I try to, 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 to forget is the idea that I know nothing about nothing or about anything so people say well did you read something about horses uh, are you aware if their ears are like that or like this or like this or like that and i said no i chose to kind of uh, let go of all my knowledge and to go there empty and be able to actually experience them for what they are because if you do that then perhaps you will um, create a different understanding in terms of what wilderness is, Beautiful. what love is, uh, what you can do with it. And uh, you can imagine, I mean, if you travel to Mars and you would encounter Martians, I mean, you would do what? You would be polite. Right. You would be somehow quiet. Right. Uh, you would certainly not be intrusive. You would wait for them to say something to Anything you. Anything at all. Uh, they, I mean, if they would come close to you, you would be thrilled, right? And sure. if they would put their heads on you, you'd be like, uh, like, wow, I mean, it's right, right, such right. a blissful experience. So at that level, I imagine that these horses represent something outside what we know. And by thinking in that way, perhaps some of these pictures created themselves the way they are. I'm mostly a philosopher than more I of a see that. I, there, really, there's very little horse and there's very much waxing poetic about yeah it's about the love of life that it is it's beautiful it exists but out there i have to tell you roberto it's it's 
it's very similar to my approach to this show where I really come into it with no information whatsoever <laughs> and then I move forward because I want to come at it from a curious point of view and I don't want to be tainted. I don't want someone to say, oh, well, this is what he's best known for and that's what she's really good at. And let me figure that out. I want to know a little bit, which is what I did with you. I did a little bit of research, but I want, I want you to tell me your story. I don't want to tell you your story. That's the way Thank I you. approach it. Thank you. It's yes. the same thing you do. You step on this island and there's this insane, insatiable appetite for, you know, curiosity and love and like something beautiful and different and quiet and serene and natural that you, there are so few places on earth where you have an environment like this. And that's why people aren't allowed on this island. And right? I have to tell to everyone just one thing. You don't have to travel to save a line to experience some of those moments. You can be in uh, East Hampton or in Bridgehampton or in Montauk or in the Jersey Shore. Go there at night, be on the shore, allow yourself to just simply be with that world which is beautiful all around you. And that uh, idea of stillness and peacefulness and, and love will embrace you, perhaps the way it embraced me on Save Island, perhaps in a different way, Nevertheless, I mean, we have to take moments to experience that blissfulness that the world has to offer. Right. And that that can only happen away from the intensity of the cities, New York or any other city of the world, for the matter of fact. What's, uh, what's next for you? Where can people see more of you? Well, I'm doing a gigantic show, a show in Toronto opening on Thursday at the... Uh, FCP Gallery, that's the Stock Exchange uh, building at, I don't know, a quarter of a million people. So I've never done a show in Toronto, so I'm kind of excited about it. And uh, at the gallery on uh, on Grand Street in uh, in Soho, uh, we're going to do uh, a 10-year... Soho, year, New York. Yeah, Soho, New York. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing a 10-year uh, a anniversary where we're going to be launching the next gigantic project and this project is really beautiful i'm not going to tell you the name but do come back to to hear about it because it will change conservation it will transform how we look at wilderness and it will perhaps transform how much we love it and not only how much we love it but how we can actually do something about it so this project that it's eight and a half years in the making it's going to be launched in the next uh, couple of days, and uh, uh, it's why very, is that, very... Why is conservation important to you? You have such a well, successful plan and life and uh, all these pictures, well, and what, yet you uh, care about... Because uh, I love nature, number one, and I have kids, uh, a five and a half and, a, and an eight and a half year old. So whatever I do, I do I'm like, for wow, them. as if I'm like, yeah. wow, those are crazy yeah, ages. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? So, I mean, whatever I do, I do answer. for them. It's very much about taking care of the world. I mean, that's the only one that we have. Yeah. And therefore, it's not that if we do or if we don't, we must do something about it. And this project, okay, I'm going to give it to you. Shall I give it to yes. you? Yes. Yes. I want to know. I want to go it's here. It's titled I Am Wild. How about that one? I am wild.com. That's right. To you. So, uh, this project is really it's a platform for transforming conservation. So, yes, you can participate in it. You can. Yeah. Uh, uh, Put your input, your thoughts, uh, your love, and your desires of uh, how you think that this planet should actually be over the next hundred years. So I have a request at some point, either take me to Sable Island with you, because you should see some of the pictures on my iPhone. They're they're really worthy of taking some of these. Um, <laughs> I would love to see some of these shipwrecks as well you can as maybe the, get horses. the horses. In so, I'm uh, but I'm uh, and so. And just fantastically I'll do obsessed. that. And before that, maybe I'm going to invite you to the gallery first. Sure. Maybe we should do a show in the gallery. We should do a show. Where we, we announce the... says something, but we never actually... Where we really. announce we what I, I Am you. Wild is and how I can transport you virtually to Sable Island before I take you with me. Uh, the I Am Wild show is going to be in Toronto or here in New York? No, it's, it's a worldwide. I, I mean, it's a soft launch in Toronto this Which, week. By the way, I climbed the CN Tower in Toronto. You have? I wow, have. That's I a, have video of it. That's an insane. Yes, it's gigantic. the highest freestanding structure in the world. How, How about that one? With ropes and... I mean, they put me at the top and then I hung off the side with a rope. And then we had a helicopter go around and go take around. pictures wow. of us. Yeah, Amazing. it was kind of impressive. I'll send you a picture. Yeah, off so, topic, off topic, uh, get back uh, on, However, get back on. The, the, the actual launch is going to be in New York in November 
after the elections. Let's let's definitely <laughs> do something with it. I would love to. Yeah. I'm I'm just wildly fascinated by this. Well, the book is for you. Enjoy Thank it, you and so uh, much. I love this. it will tell you many other things. There are about 500 words in in this book, which are very dear to me, and uh, I hope to you also. Well, I'm I'm very appreciative that you came to just tell me about what you're doing, what you love, why you love doing it. It's it's important work, but it's also beautiful work, and I am. Um, uh, happy and sad to tell you that you're stuck with me for a long time. So I'm going to be joining and you. And I am happy and happy. Times. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roberto. Enchanté. Thank Enchanté. you. You're wonderful. I really appreciate it. Oh, we also speak French, but we'll okay, do that. Okay, bye guys. Roberto Dutesco, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Is that good?